So what do we have today? Is the 810 revolutionary or evolutionary? Let's focus on that. It would, I know, it's, it's sort of a jazz thing, like it would take forever to say whatever you're going to say, because you're not really on anybody else's time, but you're like, with that guy, NPR, Bob, whatever, Bob jazz. C. Oh, oh, oh jazz. Yeah, jazz guy? Oh, yeah. Both jazz guys. There's like the yeah. national jazz guy and like the Boston jazz guy. And they both the, take the, the Boston th jazz guy is pretty awesome. They both take the time. So, yeah. So, yeah. Nikon finally announced the D810. So. So, this would not be revolutionary. No. This, isn't, this isn't blowing everyone's minds. It's not changing no. the world. Uh, it's not a huge change. It's a 800 to an 810. So, it is just a natural evolution to update the camera. Okay. So they upped the ISO range is the big, the big number. Um, they made the low better and the high better. That was one of the little constrictions on the D800. Is the ISO range wasn't as good. Um, they're using the no low pass filter sensor, which is the D800E. It's an updated version of that sensor. Um, XSpeed 4 processor, which they say is 30% faster at processing data, getting images out to the card. Um, five frames per second instead of four. They took, they've updated the air, uh, autofocus to be group area. They added group area, which is on the D4S right now, which people like a lot, apparently. Um, they added raw S, which is the half-sized raw file. Highlight weighted metering, which is metering for a central highlighted point of a picture, as opposed to like the lights, the darks, the spot, the center weighted. So the auto, auto metering of the camera can do like a different frame for highlighted areas. The flat, flat picture control setting. Yeah, it uses um, um, some, yeah, akin to the logarithmic color profile in the red cameras. It'll potentially produce better results, but it takes more effort to process. I, I didn't know the, don't know the technical side of what the color grading would have been for the video. It gives you more color data and less contrast data, so you can adjust the contrast in post and still have all of your color data. Yeah. So it ju it's just a, a small shift in where it's what it's storing in the data. So when you look at it, it, it looks flat on the screen when you're looking at it, but then you can add the contrast back in and post. Yeah, it seemed like it was had more potential, more yeah. potential for yeah, no, it, better it, quality. It's a big deal for video people. Uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Also a big deal for video very, people. Very, very big deal. <laughs> so the price point is the same price point as the current D800e, which is $3,300, $3,299.95. Yep. Um, I, I, the price point, while going up a little bit from the D800, is still very doable. Consistent with the D800e, which it has a lot of the features of. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't get as much information on the SDK, the software development kit, for the 810. I haven't seen much information on it at all. But the idea that they're talking about that is very good. I'd like to see that direction. Yeah, it sounds like they're actually promoting people doing things like what Magic Lantern has done on the Canon side. The D800 um, is a very plain set of features to start. It was intentionally that way. It's a very professional camera. There's not a lot of bells and whistles that you don't need. There's a lot of professional bells and whistles, like the, the dual axis gyro or um, virtual, virtual planes and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in there that you'll use professionally, but there's not a lot of extra bits. Like it has the four modes. It's yeah. A, P, M, and S. That's it. There's not yep. a big dial of modes. There's not a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. The SDK would be nice, the ability to modify stuff. Well, that, that'll be great. The big push for it has been the, this past week is the Leica T mirrorless. This one got me thinking about a new segment that we're going to talk about when we're done with this because it has a unibody aluminum case. It's pretty. It's very pretty. It's very, I would say it's very fashionable. From the reviews I've read, I guess it feels very good to hold and to shoot, well, would, except for when it's cold or hot out because well, it just Because it's conducts. made out of a solid block of aluminum. Yeah. And aluminum likes to, you know, move heat. I guess it is very comfortable, though, for, for being made of just solid, uncoated metal. It's seemed... Yeah. Uh, the interface on it is completely like your smartphone. It's all mm -hmm. one touch screen, the same screen you take your pictures on. you got to put your fingers on and move around your interface. It doesn't look... Like, it looks like a nice interface. I mean, it looks like... Actually, it looks like BlackBerry designed it. If you look at it really closely, it looks like the guys from Research in Motion designed the, the interface for them. 
Um, the guys from Audi designed the case. Not that that matters. Yeah, I sure. Um, it does have a 16 megapixel. German companies. Yep. Uh, it does have a 16 megapixel uh, APS-C sensor. So it's a crop sensor camera. Uh, here's the thing. It only has two lenses available. Well, yeah. I mean, and why would you want more lenses for your tiny, really expensive camera? I mean, you can get a 15 to 36, which I believe is an F5663 variable, or a 23 millimeter prime that is an F4. And neither of them come with it. And they're both expensive. But nothing is quite as bad as the battery, huh? Well, I, the batteries are funny at $140 a piece. Um, how they go in and out of the camera was pretty funny, too. It mounts flush, so there's no door, there's nothing to actually open to get the battery out. You just sort of push it. And when you push it, you push it once, and it kind of drops down. I think you have to hit it in again to pull it all the way out. Huh. But if you push it once and it drops down, and you just kind of yank it out and just like rips the plastic out of the back of the battery, which I guess is hilarious. Yeah. It's like, like double action on an SD. I card. think it may have a button. You know, like you press the button and it just kind of pops down a little bit, and oh, then you have to push it all the way back in. Pop it out. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It's. I mean, it makes it look very nice and smooth in the bottom when it's in there. One of the things I'm worried about, though, because it's an uncoated aluminum, that thing's got to scratch up fast. It, it had a, It has a surface to it. It's not like right. shiny aluminum. It's. It's. It's got something on it's it. It's textured. Okay. It's like kind of sandblasted or whatever they use. All right. Because I was just like, if it's just like polished aluminum, and you like. Let, let, let's just say I'm a you know, billionaire heiress and I can afford one of these things and I throw it in my not purse with my bad. keys and it scratches it up, I'm going to be really pissed off. It's not billionaire heiress camera. Okay. The big Leicas are billionaire heiress the cameras. The big Leicas are, okay. And, and just to tie in with the fact that you have an obnoxious solid piece of aluminum, if you did want to protect it, Mini Yacht, people who make wooden cases for everything, have put out single piece wooden cases that clip onto the front of your camera. Yeah. So your solid uh, piece of aluminum can be covered by a solid piece of handcrafted wood of your choice of seven different woods, including zebra wood, which I yeah, used to have in my that? truck. How much is uh, that? How much is that They have case? not announced the price on that yet. It's probably like $400. Easily, because their iPad case is like 300 Yep. So the added segment we're going to add to our weekly review I came up with, and we're calling it the More Money Than Brains Club. Uh, but that might, that might change we're, as we're playing with the format. Uh, but what Ryan and I are going to do is we're going to look at the things we reviewed today and give them a score from 1 to 60. 1 is very useful. 60 is totally frivolous. We can make up any score in between that we want. Um, the catch is, is that there's a series of scores for different skill levels and or professions Yes. Of photographers. So it's not a singular, this thing is so useful or not so useful because that's kind of, it's very, um, it's very personal to us. It's not a good metric. But this is our take on how useful it might be to this group. Yes. So we have six groups that we're going to evaluate this for. Um, at the bottom of the range, not that these are the bottom feeders of the photography world, but they are, people who take selfies. Above them are photo enthusiasts. Above them are semi-pros. Then we go up to wedding photographers, event photographers, like concert photographers, and sports photographers and photojournalists. So the people who can justify super high-end equipment. Yeah, and that, I mean, the, the top end is sports, commercial, like uh, yeah. the high, high commercial and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So which end do you want to start on? You start on the low end. You start on the low end? Okay. You so always start on the low end. Well, then I gotta rearrange the sheet for next week. Um, you can write them from the bottom. I can do that too. We're gonna start with the D810, because that's the first one we talked about. For taking selfies, where do you rate the D810? One to 60. So yeah, the higher the number, the more frivolous it is. Yes. Frivolous and it's... Um, for someone of that level, it's, it's up there, probably a 50. Can I give it a 50? Uh, I would give them like a 55. I think if you're just taking selfies, you're spending way too much money. But I'm going to reserve 60s for really obnoxious things. All right, if you are a photo enthusiast. That's, I'll, met, I'll 45 it. It's 45 it? 
I'm gonna give them. If, a, it's like I, I do see 800s in people's hands who are enthusiasts a lot, because they're. For a lot of things, they they might be the most expensive, but they're also a very solid camera for most things. So it's not like you're wasting money buying it ever. All right, so you convince. I'll, I'll, I'll forty it. You're gonna forty it. All right. Well, you convinced me to go to a forty-five. I was gonna write fifty at first, and you kind of justified me writing a forty-five. Uh, for the semi-pro photographer. A thirty-five. You're a thirty-five. I see. Where it's the... it's still not quite. There's better options for semi-pro, so it's still a little bit extravagant for a semi professional to shell out that kind of money all right i'll agree with you on that i'll give you a, i'll give them a 35 because that's about where i see the curve kind of turning in the favor yeah uh, for a wedding photographer this is more like a 10, <laughs> 10. Okay. it's kind of where it all right yeah i i i might give it a 20 i think i think you do very very well with your with your 600 it's there it's very that's I think a 600 is a one, so it's like that my scale is like that. All right. Um, for event photographers? It's, it's, it's a weird one for events, because it's weird to call it frivolous if it's not quite as suited for certain things. Yep. But I'll, I'll, I'll stay at a 10 for them. Stay at a 10? Because I think I, it's still a decent camera in that venue. I'm going to put it as a 10 because for an event photographer, this is a hell of a backup body. The ISO performance is not as good as some of the other cameras that Nikon makes, no, so it makes the event stuff a little tough, but, I but think the resolution's a, there. for. Yeah, the resolution's there, and I think, like I said, as a backup body, and if you're shooting events, you probably have a backup body with you anyway. Yeah. It, I, mean, I know I do. A backup for a what? D4, D4S. It's, it's a weird switch to switch from a D4S to a D800. I have... Jared Poland was talking about, when he was talking about the D810, that that would be a backup a potentially a backup for his D4S. I don't understand that. Well, he doesn't really shoot much from the pit anymore either. I, I don't, but I, I don't mean ever. I don't ever understand a D810 being a backup for a D4S because they're apples and oranges. They're so different in the way that they function. Why would you ever switch from one to the other during the same venue? And what would you use as a backup, the six? six for ten? what? For the D4S. A D4S, a D3, a D3S, a D3X, a D4, anything that's... All right. Or DF, honestly, a DF is the perfect backup yeah, for a D4S. DF is a it's backup. more sensitive, it's small, it takes the same lenses. The DF is the friggin' perfect backup, the same price or lower. All right. All right. That's, but. All right, yeah. then going up to the sports photographer or photojournalist. It's, a, I don't think, this, the 800, so especially in commercial, it's, it's a one for me. So in the, in the high level, it's it's a one. I think it's one of the best cameras, best SLRs for a lot of commercial work. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stay at, I'm actually going to go to a 15 because it doesn't have the frames per second that you need for things like sports. It doesn't for sports. It Or, or even like the spray and pray photojournalism shots. Yeah. But in the, like any, any sort of commercial work, you'd, it makes a big difference. So it's one of those... It's not frivolous. It might not be ideal, but it's not frivolous. Oh yeah, no, I'm not saying it's frivolous in the least. I mean, a 15 is a respectable score. Yeah. That so. is after what we're talking about. It's frivolous. All right, I'm gonna do some math here real quick. Average it all up. Ryan gives the D810 a 24.3. And I gave it a 29.1, giving our first more money than brain score of 26.7 to the D810. Uh, that is actually a respectable score in our book. Yeah. Any, anything under a 30 is, is not more money than brains. Now we get to do the like a T. Yeah. This should be interesting. Or the selfie taker. And this is gonna be my, my lowest score, obviously. It's probably a 35. The only reason it's that my brain low. With that. The only reason it's that low is because the only redeeming quality of this camera is the way it looks. So it's, only, it's least frivolous purchaser is the one who would take pictures of themselves with it. It's $1,850. Yeah. It's, they're the least frivolous category. <laughs> I think it's more frivolous if you fucking call yourself any sort of photographer to spend that money on that. If you're not actually any sort of interest in photography, 
I think it's much less frivolous to spend a bunch of money on a piece of metal you take pictures of your face with. All right, I'm giving it a 50 because it's $1,850. It. All right, for 50. these photo enthusiasts. That's a 50. All right. No argument there. Uh, for the semi-pro. Also a 50. I'm going to say 55 because it, even though it has the cool factor, it's not there. Oh, I forgot to go up. What is it? Semi-pro is... I'm going to go to 55 on that one. Go 55. All right. The 60. wedding photographer. It's a 60. Yeah, no point. I'm, I'm going to stay at 55. No. I just think the cool factor's there if you're the no, wedding it photographer. Isn't. No. Uh, the yeah. event photographer. Also a 60. 60. And the sports photographer, photojournalist. 55. 55? Yeah. All right. It... It's smaller. It's terrible, but it's smaller. All right. Brian scored it a 52.5. And uh, because I can't do math quickly, it took me a while to figure out that I scored it a 55, which gives it a final score of 53.75, which means to buy this, you must have more money than brains. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we're not even going to review the case because that's going to get straight 60s across the board. I, I consider that part of that. I think that that particular accessory is part of that first part. So that was a lot of fun, and we'll do this again next week. But we'll see you tomorrow.